Now, the background preparation has been completed. So now we're going to put on some mortar into the joints here and point this area up. It's wetted down, it's, it's still moist, so we're ready to go. Now this particular mix is one we did in a previous video and it's round to our 3.5 off-white with, with, with a gritty sand. So we just take some here, pop it on the hog, which is the one I've made up, and this is how we basically go about the job. Push it into the joint as much as you can. Now there's a big area here, there's a big hole here in the raw, in the in the in the wall. So in that case, I'm going to use a pinning. So how the pinning works is you get your pinning and you pop it in here and then you put in the mortar and then you just tap that in. So what you're trying to achieve is a look that has more stone than mortar. So this just fills that gap. So I continue on here. You push it in well. Don't worry too much about smearing the stone. You can, you can do it really, really slowly and really, really carefully, but you're not gonna get much, much done in the day. The thing is, get it in there. Don't try and clean it while it's soft, wait till the mortar picks up and that'll clean off pretty nicely. Now what's nice is, when you're doing this, push it well in. We'll tickle this up later on a little bit better, but try and strike it so as that the mortar is at, at a slight angle so moisture tends to run off and out rather than leaving it in this direction where the moisture can go in and stay. Now you can do this pretty quickly with this particular hawk because it's light, it's maneuverable. So as you can see I'm moving quite quickly. I'm pushing it well in, filling all the joints with mortar. Get some more here. And the mortar is relatively dry. If you have it quite wet, it's difficult to work with. It smears the stone pretty badly as well. So just have it on the dry side. But enough that it's workable. If it's too dry, it's powdery and it's not nice to work with. It tends to kind of fall out of the joints as well. So there we go. We'll keep going down here. Push it right in to the joints. So if you've got a stone wall, like in a house or a, a build of any kind of a building or even a garden wall, but particularly in any kind of a domestic building that you're going to be using, this is your first line of defense against the weather. If you leave all these joints open, moisture can get in so much easier. So we've pointed up this little section here. We're going to leave this and I'll show you later how to uh, finish this off. The pointing now has been left for mm, about an hour. So we're going to come back to it now and we're going to show you how to, how to finish it and how to tickle it up and make it look nice. This plaster small tool is such a useful piece of kit. We use the back of it here now, and what we do is, we go back over it here, and what we're doing is, we're getting rid of this sheen that was created by the blade when we initially put it on. So you get rid of that, and we're opening up the pores, and we're also cleaning it back ever so slightly, so that it's just ever so slightly recessed. But what else, the other thing we're doing is, we are taking it off the stone. So we're trying to expose as much of the stone as possible because the stone is the beautiful part. The mortar is just there keeping it together and keeping the whole thing weather tight. But the stone is what we really want to see. So we just scrape it back. And it gives it a nice open texture which allows the moisture to migrate through the mortar that little bit easier. Whereas when you have it when you do this, 
you give it a sheen and it seals it. So we're trying to get rid of that. And this also gives it a slightly aged look. Which is nice, it's desirable to have. Rather than making it look like it's exactly new. And it also stops it from being extremely white. If you're doing a bit of pointing and you're finding at the end of the day and maybe the following day, it's gone really, really white and you're kind of, hmm, that doesn't look quite right. It's probably because it's dried out too quickly. So then after this, I'm gonna talk about protection and that should help you with your, uh, with the color. Now, now we've scrubbed it all back. We then get the bashing brush or the churn brush and instead of doing this with it, we bash it, we hit it. And that just unifies the whole lot together. And as the mortar shrinks and dries, it leaves a slight gap at the edge of the stone. So this just pushes it back into the joint again. You don't hit it very hard, but you hit it hard enough to push it back in and you get rid of the, the unevenness caused by this. So this gives it a nice, even finish and it also cleans the mortar from the stone so I think that's about it what do you think Harry it looks very nice Eric good so right we more or less have it where we want it we've got the stone covered the gaps are covered but we've reduced the amount that was on the stone to make the stone stand out a little bit more now the next most important thing we do is we protect it and in doing that we use hessian so we drape hessian over the wall and this does a couple of things it stops it from drying out quickly it stops the sun from hitting it if the stone is going to, is, is, is hitting the wall and that helps to stop it from drying out it stops the wind from getting to it because the wind is will cause it to dry out too quickly the more quickly it dries out you get a weaker and a much more whiter mortar which is undesirable in both counts every day then for about ah, five to seven days come along with the pump spray and spray it down again if the hessian is only one layer you can actually wet the hessian and it'll probably go through it so instead of having to remove the hessian but this now will stop from drying out quickly dry out nice and slowly and it'll you'll have a nice buff colored mortar at the end of it so i think that's more or less this 